Hello, how are you? My name is Jared Gutierrez. I'm a certified medical laboratory technician and I've been working on COVID-19 tests for the last year now. Uh, today I want to talk to you about the different types of COVID-19 tests that you can get and which one is best for you, how to interpret them, and what they mean for people. Um, it's important to understand the different types of COVID-19 tests because of the hyper-political nature of this virus as well as the executive order that was put in place by Joe Biden restricting traveling to the United States uh, unless you have a COVID negative test. Um, and as well as travel restrictions in other countries requiring the same thing. It's important to understand which test is best for you for wherever you're trying to go. Uh, we have three different types of tests that are the most common type. Uh, we have the SARS-CoV-2 antigen, SARS-CoV-2 PCR, and the PCR with cycle time. I want to differentiate COVID-19 from SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 is the name of the virus, and that virus causes a disease that we call COVID-19. And that's important to differentiate because of the different results interpretations that we're going to have for each type of test, uh, where one test may show that you're positive for COVID-19 and or SARS-CoV-2. So, uh, our first test is the SARS-CoV-2 antigen test. This test is looking for a protein that's on the outside of the virus capsule here, and that protein connects to a chemical that's on a strip. And when the protein connects to the chemical, it produces a color change that we can see, and based on whether or not we see that color or the strip, um, that's how we determine whether or not you are negative or positive. So it's very similar to a pregnancy test um, where you have two lines if you're positive or one line if you're negative or if you're pregnant or not. So it's exactly the same methodology where you're looking for a chemical that connects to a protein uh, to produce that color change. This test is very fast. Uh, at our laboratory, it takes us about 15 minutes to run this test. Uh, other laboratories in the United States can run this test in about 10 minutes. It's very cheap. Uh, at our lab, it costs us about $5, and this is the cheapest test that you, for your insurance. They'll charge you the least amount of money for this kind of test because of the low cost. It is much less accurate, though. Uh, it has about 90 to 95% accuracy, depending on the type of test that the laboratory uses. Uh, and actually, the FDA issued a recall a couple months ago for different types of antigen analyzers that were giving false results for people, and they considered it a public health risk, so they recalled those analyzers and had them fixed before using them again. One of those being the BD Veritor, which is a Thera company that makes uh, analyzers for viruses and stuff, and one of those, uh, actually, uh, one of those analyzers was in the White House, and they used that to test uh, Donald Trump and his family. This test is sufficient for most people to travel to most countries. Uh, most countries now require a COVID negative test result, and this will suffice for the United States if you're traveling to and from the United States, as well as most other countries. However, some countries require a PCR result, and what that is is this test, the SARS-CoV-2 PCR. This test is much more specific because it looks at the RNA of the virus. You can think of RNA as the DNA for viruses. Uh, in humans, our DNA defines who we are, and it's specific to an individual person. This RNA is specific to SARS-CoV-2. So what it does is it takes, it looks for a specific strand of DNA that is specific to the virus and multiplies it over thousands of times in a process called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. And if it's able to find and detect that RNA, it'll multiply it over thousands of times until it reaches a detectable level for the analyzer to find it. And then it will determine whether or not you are positive for the RNA or negative for the RNA. This test is much slower than the other one. This one takes us about 45 minutes at our laboratory. Other laboratories, they take about an hour to run this type of test. It's also very expensive. This one, your insurance company will charge you a lot more for this type of test unless it's free for you. Um, 
because there's a lot more moving parts and the reagent that's used, uh, the chemicals that are used are very expensive. Uh, however, it is very, very accurate. Uh, a study published by the FDA that was used for the approval for emergency use for a lot of these analyzers that use this type of test showed that it has a 100% specificity and 100% sensitivity, which means you basically cannot have a false positive result, which means there's no one that can get tested that's going to show positive when they're actually negative. Because it's very similar to like finding your DNA at the scene of a crime. If your DNA may be present at the scene of the crime, that doesn't necessarily mean that you committed the crime, but they found the DNA there. So they're going to say, hey, this person was here at this crime scene. That's important to understand because this type of test is so specific and so sensitive that it can actually show positive results for people who do not have the disease. So you may be positive for the virus, SARS-CoV-2, but you may not actually have the disease COVID-19, and you may not show symptoms or even be able to spread it to other people. Uh, it is the most sensitive type of test that you can run. So it's very important that people understand that a positive PCR may not necessarily mean that you have the disease or are able to spread it to others. However, it's very likely that if you have a positive PCR, you're more likely to spread it to other people. Uh, this is important because a lot of doctors have some concern with the inflation of numbers being um, used to initiate lockdowns and political restrictions. Uh, they're saying that using this methodology as a standard of testing is improper and it shouldn't be done because it's misrepresenting the actual disease spreading to people. The other test that we do is the CCR with cyclotimes. This is the most detailed possible test. The Journal of Clinical Virology considers this test the gold standard of all COVID-19 testing. It is the standard that is compared and used to validate all other methods of testing. It is the slowest type of test at our laboratory. It takes us about one hour to run this type of test, and it is exactly the same as the PCR. The only difference is that when performing this test, it calculates numbers, and it's, we're able to analyze and interpret those numbers to get more details about how the virus has progressed through the person's body. This is the most accurate type of test because not only can we see what, whether they have the virus or not, whether the RNA is present in their body or not, we're also able to see what type of virus they have, whether or not it's a new strain or an old strain, or whether or not they have a large amount of virus in their body or a low amount. We also call that viral titer, uh, low titer or high titer, depending on how sick you are. And we use, we, it's a very detailed test because we use what's called cycle time to calculate how much virus is in a person's body. The CT value is a value that's used to describe how many repetitions the PCR cycle has to go through. So when it's repeating that DNA process, when it's copying that DNA thousands of times over, like I was saying, it counts how many times it has to do that. And the amount of cycles that it has to do will determine how much virus you have in your body based on when it is able to detect that sufficient level of RNA. So we have this chart here basically explains how it works. You have the CT value here and the viral titer over here. The higher your CT value, which means the more cycles it has to go through to find that virus, that means you have less virus in your body. So it's a low viral titer, which means you're less sick, you're less likely to transmit it to other people, and you are less symptomatic if you have a high CT value. People with a low CT value are very more symptomatic, they're able to spread it easier to other people, and those people should be in isolation or quarantine. This test is not for most people. Uh, this test is not necessary for most travel purposes. Uh, you'll typically only get this test if you either already contracted COVID-19 and they're doing a surveillance on you to make sure that you're getting better, or if you are trying to leave quarantine and they want to see 
uh, if your viral titer is low enough that they can release you from quarantine, that you won't be a risk to others based on how much of the virus you have and how easily you are able to spread it to other people. So that's the three different types of tests that most people have performed. And whenever you're traveling to another country, uh, whenever you're trying to see what their uh, restrictions are for travel, you should always consult with your doctor. They can get you the proper information on which test is necessary for whatever country you're trying to go to, as well as what is the best test for your health situation. I hope this briefing was very informative for you about the different types of COVID-19 tests that you can get. And I want you all to have a nice day.